يلا تفضل سيد احمد قبل ما نصلي على محمد وال محمد And this is very, very apparent. Our Imams left many, many du'as for us. وَدَلِيلَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ عِنَّا أَدْعِيَا مِنْ يَوْمِ الْأَحَدْ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْتَنِينَ يعني عِنَّا أَحَدْ تَنِينَ ثَلَيْتَ وَأَرْبَعَ خَمِيسِ جُمْعَ سَبِتْ أَحَدْ We got a du'a for every single day of the week. شو بعد بدنا أكتر من هيك؟ شو بدو يكون العذر؟ شو بدو يكون العذر اللي نحن بدنا نعطينا لنفسنا؟ What's going to be the excuse that we give ourselves? When the day of judgment comes and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us, why did you not pray to me here? Why did you not do more dua? Why did you not do this? Why did you not do that? We will no longer have an excuse. Nobody, nobody is going to have an excuse when they get asked this question. Imam Ali alayhi salam was one of the most people who used to do dua. One of the duas that we constantly read, especially on Thursday, is dua kumil. What does Imam Ali alayhi salam say in dua kumil? Imam Ali alayhi salam says, Allahumma inni as'aluka bi rahmatika allati wasi'at kulla shay. Imam Ali alayhi salam says in dua kumail, Oh Allah, I ask you through your mercy that has encompassed on everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is on everything. But if you can't accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot make you accept his mercy. Fil ba'd al yom, there's a lot of people today, they've lost hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They've lost hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because they've asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something and He's not given them it. Which keep in mind, losing hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the biggest sins. It's one of the biggest haram things you can do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is raining on you every day. It's there for the taking. And I'm going to give an example. Something that is said constantly is al Allah. That when we're in prayer and you're doing qalud, what is that from? This is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not something that is required, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives it to you as an extra. If you want to do it, you can do it. If not, you don't have to do it. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. السلام عليكم 
مين اللي سلم مين من العالم قد افلح من صلى على محمد وال محمد السلام Imam al-Sadiq replied to him and told him, I have seven tips for you if you want your du'a to be accepted. The first tip is before you do your du'a, be on wudu. Just like prayer, you got to be on wudu in order to pray. When you're going to see your rabbi, when you're going to, see your, you're going to talk to him, you must be on wudu. The second is to face the qibla. Same thing as, the, as prayer. The third is to is to begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. You must start with that. The same as prayer. When we begin prayer, we say the Iqamah. What comes right after? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The fourth is after you say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank Him for all the blessings He has given you. The fifth, the fifth one is you must ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. You must repent from the sins that you have committed. The sixth is to say salawat, and the seventh is to finally ask for your hajjah. Now the person continued by saying, I have not been doing all these, but I've been asking constantly. I've asked hundreds and hundreds of times, and I have not received it. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam replies with words of wisdom. And he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows when to give you something. You see a lot of people today asking for outrageous stuff, asking for millions of dollars, asking for uh, a, a mansion, asking for cars, asking for this, asking for that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that if he gives you these things, you might go astray. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what will happen if he gives you these things. And what does he do? He holds out on you. This is another thing of his mercy. He holds out on you. He knows if he gives you this, you're going to go astray and that will eventually lead you to, to go to Jahannam. So he's having mercy on you by not giving you these things. Obviously, there's a lot of people, when they hear this, they're not happy. Oh, I've been praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the imams said, if you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he'll, he'll answer your dua. I've been praying, why is he not answering? There's a lot of people today, they pray, they do dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides not to answer them. Like I, I gave the reason why. What do these people do? They go against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They lose hope in him. They start to say he's a fake. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Man Whoever follows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will find him in a way. Whatever, how hard it's going to be. If it's impossible, it's possible with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even as hard as you think it will be, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will find you a way. What else does he say? La ta'ashu min rahmatullah. There's a lot of people today, what happens? They begin to get arrogant. They begin to get greedy with the, with the, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like I said, there's a lot of people today, they don't know the ni'am that are upon them. How much of us today when we woke up in the morning we said Alhamdulillah because we get to wake up, because we get to see our family? Not many of us. This is something that is clearly forgotten. There's so much blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in between our hands and we're forgetting them. If I was to ask every single one of you, how much na'am did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with today? You can't come. There's a hadith, a beautiful hadith. It says, 
But if you try to count the, the, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you won't be able to. Every breath you're taking, this is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You waking up in the morning, this is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You seeing your family, this is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You waking up with good health, this is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we don't think of this. Why don't we think of this? We don't think of this because we're too focused on the things we ask. ما حدا بينتبه لهذا الشغلات ويقولوا الحمد لله ليش لأن سألوا لله سبحانه وتعالى طلبوا منه السيارة وما ما عطاهني. فبيقولوا إذا الله سبحانه وتعالى ما عطان السيارة معناتها ما ما ميجيب لي دعاء. He's not answering my prayer. My brothers and sisters, this is extremely wrong to think. Allah سبحانه وتعالى is answering your prayers without you even realizing. The mercy that He's raining upon you, the blessings He's raining upon you, you don't even realize. This is how much blessings it is. Like I said, if I was to ask every single person here how much blessings, some of us might not even be able to count them. We might list four or five, but trust me, there's thousands upon thousands upon thousands. Sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Ruhi an Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. قال الدعاء سلاح المؤمنين. This dua that you're praying to Allah سبحانه وتعالى it also benefits you. It's your weapon. Any any hardship that falls upon you, which hardship will fall upon a مؤمن? What does the Holy Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم say? روي عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم قال إذا الله حب عبده التلاف الله سبحانه وتعالى loves his servant he will test him. When Allah سبحانه وتعالى tests you, what do you return you with? You return with dua. You return by getting closer to him. There's a lot of people today, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests them, they, they abandon him. Like I said, there's many people like this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't answer their dua, they forget it. Say, oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't answer my dua, that means he doesn't care for me. What does Amin al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam say? Amin al-Mu'mineen says, if you, ask a per if you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one time and he doesn't answer, ask him two times. If he doesn't answer, ask him ten times. If he doesn't answer, ask him a hundred times. If he doesn't answer, ask him a thousand times. Keep asking him until he answers. Why? Today, if you want something from somebody, let's say you gave money to somebody. And they told you, you know what, in a week, I'll pay you back. You gave them $10, $20, it doesn't matter that much. One week passes, they haven't returned the money. Two weeks passes, they haven't returned the money. Three weeks pass, they haven't returned the money. What must you do? The logical thing is to keep asking. I gave you $10, you told me you were going to return it to me. Where is it? You keep asking, you keep asking, you keep asking. This is for money. What if it's for your athena? What is it if it's for getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Well, how much time does we ask, must we ask? Keep in mind, dua is not only asked of us, it was asked of the Imams. Imam Ali alayhi salam, we have a dua that we read every Thursday. Dua Kumail. Imam Ali alayhi salam is praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Ali. A ma'asum is praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If a ma'asum is praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what must we do? One who has not committed a sin is praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and us who commit sins daily are saying we do not need dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't answer my dua. You know what? He's not worth my time. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. My brothers and sisters, another reason why your dua might not be getting accepted and Imam Ali alayhi salam mentions this in dua kumail. He says, Allahumma firli ad dunub allati tahbisu al dua. Imam Ali alayhi salam asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, forgive the deeds that are making my, du my dua in prison, that are not letting it be able to reach him. Imam Ali alayhi salam is asking for this. I'm assuming, as I stated, he has not committed a sin, but he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. Us that commit hundreds and hundreds of sins. In a day, Allah, Allahu Alam, how much each person is committing, but I guarantee you, we're committing more than one a day. So if we're committing more than one a day, we should be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. That's the bottom line. Like I said, if you want something from somebody, you will, you will go to, to the end to get it. You will go to the end of the world to get it. Like I said, this is the akhirah we're talking about. This is not anything from the dunya. This is the akhirah. We must go to any length to get it. 
obviously, as we know, about a, about a week ago, the, the holy month of Ramadan was uh, was concluded. Ta'iban min jim'a, khatamnaha li shahar Ramadan. Wa andak ba'd al-nas bi shahar Ramadan, kainu am bi sallu, wa kainu am bi yiru Qur'an, wa kainu am bi yidu ali rabbihim. We have a lot of people today, during the holy month of Ramadan, they were praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were reading Qur'an, they were reading dua, they were praying five times a day. Wa ba'd shahar Ramadan, wa afu sala, wa wa afu jihidah fasa. Why? As we know, about a week ago, the holy month of Ramadan was concluded. You had people praying, getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reading dua, reading Quran. After the holy month of Ramadan, they stopped. Why? Why, my brothers and sisters? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the holy Quran, now, I might have read the verse wrong, but I don't think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the verse, only, only pray during Ramadan, or only be patient during the holy month of Ramadan. I don't think he said that. My brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he brought down the, the, the act of prayer, it was a wajib act. It was a wajib act. Wajib means it's wajib on you every single day of your life. Once you become valid, it is wajib on you. Not only during the holy month of Ramadan, but during every month. During every day. This is something we must realize. There's a lot of people, they only pray one month out of the year. And they think if they pray that one month out of the year, what's going to happen? That one month out of the year is going to cancel out the rest of, the sin, of the rest of their sins from all the other 11 months. That's not, that's not going to happen. When you pray one month out of the year, that shows that your niyyah is not pure. It shows that you're only doing it because it's the holy month of Ramadan. That's the only reason I'm doing it. And in the holy month of Ramadan... The, the deeds are amplified, and this is very apparent in the Holy Quran. What does Allah Subhanahu wa Taala say? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul al-Qadr, wa ma adraka ma laylatul al-Qadr. Laylatul al-Qadr khairun min alfi shahr. Tanazzalu al-Malaika wa al-Ruhu fiha bi idni Rabbihim min kulli amr. Salamu hiya hatta matla al-Fajr. Sadaq Allah al-Ali al-Azim. Laylatul al-Qadr khairun min alfi shahr. There's some people that see this this verse, and they say. The acts from the holy month, the, the, the holy nights of power from Laylatul Qadr are from a thousand, a thousand months. You calculate a thousand months, a thousand divided by twelve, it's over eighty years. So you know what? I'm gonna pray those three days, those three to six days, and then it's gonna cover my eighty years that I'm gonna live. This is not the way. Yes, you're gonna be praying. Yes, you're gonna be getting deeds from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and He's going to be blessing you. But. How much more deeds are you going to be missing out? How much sins are you going to be committing? Because you're missing prayers, because you're missing easy, easy hasanat. This is something we must look at. This is something we must look at. The people that are doing this, hold in nas and the ambiya turdu ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the people that are saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not accepting my dua. The people that are only praying one month out of the year. We must realize that this is not the way. That, oh, I'm going to only pray one month out of the year. This, 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 this doesn't work. Like I say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the act wajib, wajib. If it's wajib on you, then you must do it the entire year. You must do it the entire year, not only for one month. My brothers and sisters, if you know anybody that is like this, that only prays out of one month out of the year, like I said, among the youth, it's very common. It's very, very common, and this is very apparent. When you go to the Marrakis and you see that during Shah Ramadan it's very packed, and that during the other times it's not very packed, this tells you that only some people decide to go to the mosque during the holy month of Ramadan. It should not be like this. It should be, we go to the mosque at all times. If there's a, if there's a barnamish, if there's a munasabah, we should be there. We should try our best to be there, not only during the holy month of Ramadan. As I stated, tonight is the death of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. I didn't have something prepared, but now that we have a lot of great people in our, in our presence, I will leave it for them, and they will, inshallah, educate you guys some more.